Hi guys, today we're not flying, today we're not talking about the RC jets and EDFs or maybe a little bit later, uh, but as I have an array of nice EDFs, but today with this cold winter weather, we are talking about 3D printing. And 3D printing is very common for everyone, for all of you probably, but uh, not long ago uh, a new way of 3D printing came to the market, the resin 3D printing, and this is what we're going to focus on today. I used to be a 3D printer for many years with normal filament printer, and uh, some years ago I was thinking maybe to go to 3D printing in, with resin, but it was kind of expensive. And this December I decided to give it a go, I bought myself a nice 3D printer, resin 3D printer, and I decided to start investigating the subject. And after uh, one and a half months of studying 3D resin 3D printing, I decided to make a video for you because this subject is huge. And actually, this is the second video that I'm doing. For, we are doing for you because the first one two weeks ago, after recording, we decided to not use it because I realized that this is such a vast subject that I need to study a little bit, little bit more. So now, after two more weeks, we record this video again. And this video is going to be a little bit long, but it's going to be very interesting. So, in the beginning, is it worth it? Is it worth to spend this money for resin 3D printer while you already have a normal filament 3D printer? Yes, definitely yes because this is a different game, this is a different technology, this is, this is a different league. The quality of the print is really fine, the speed of the print is 5 to 10 times faster, so it's amazing, but also it has a lot of drawbacks, it has a lot of surprises on the way, that's why this video is coming. And there are some dangers also. So we are going to focus at the, at the precautions first, which is kind of important because it will make your life much easier. So, the gloves, super, super, I'm going straight to the subject, then we'll talk about EDFs later, but now the gloves, super important subject. You are going to print a lot with your new 3D printer because uh, in the beginning you will, you will want to learn as much as you can and uh, it will be dirty. Three, resin 3D printing is so dirty comparing to filament printing that sometimes you actually ask yourself is it worth it, but still it is worth it. So get yourself uh, this fat gloves and one, one more thing. Why do I repeat this? I will only repeat in the, because a lot of people say in the videos that you need gloves. Yes, okay, but I saw all of the videos in internet in YouTube about resin 3D printing and I will mention in this video only things that were not mentioned elsewhere. So it's gonna be new, it's gonna be interesting. Now the gloves. <laughs> Get yourself thick gloves. Uh, neutral, the best neutral, but the thick ones, the ones that you can wash your toilet with, a fat gloves because you will use them a lot. And if you decide, if you go to if you want to go for the thin gloves, like these ones, nitrile thin gloves, you will create a huge pile of, of rubbish and this will be very unecological and you don't want to do it. You want to keep our planet clean, so forget about these ones because these ones you use once and that's it. So use these ones and then clean them with the paper towel after every time you dirty them. And now paper towel is something that you will start to use a lot it's when you print a lot it's like this huge roll of paper towel sometimes lasts for one week only so get a lot of paper towel it's like super friendly you know and now everybody in the, in the youtube videos they say of course you need a, a, a filter because a lot of times you will have failed prints which is okay so the prints will not work somehow and you want to retrieve your used resin to the cup or something and you want to do it through the filter because there is debris floating, half, half cured debris floating in the, the resin vat and you need the filter. But nobody says in the YouTube videos that it has to be a specific filter, it has to be at least 190 microns, super important because this is a thick 
filter with big holes and this way the thicker resins will flow through it. If you buy a normal filter, which is I think 110 or 120 microns, some of the resins will just be floating there forever and they will not go through. So, 190 micro microns filter. Yeah, of course, assuming that you already decided to get a 3D printer and now it's cold outside and it's perfect time for printing pilots, for printing parts for your plane. Like for example, this EDF shroud, it's 130 millimeters. It's beautiful, I designed it and I printed it. And the quality is mind blowing. It's five microns, microns. It's, it's smooth. Comparing to the normal uh, filament 3D printer, this is mind blowing, super nice. Your hands are clean because you have a paper and gloves and, uh, and you, you retrieved your resin, but resin 3D printing is kind of smelly. Some resins are more smelly, some less, and I will say about this later. But you need to have your uh, window open slightly, always, because otherwise it will be tough. It will be hard for you because you will feel irritation in your eyes and in your throat. So there must be ventilations. You, ventilation, you cannot work without it. But there is one super nice thing that you must buy. This is a, it's actually charging now. This is a Elegoo small char rechargeable filter with the carbon insert inside and the air is flowing through this carbon insert and you place it inside your 3D printer under this hood and it's marvelous. After the whole night of printing, when you open the 3D printer, you don't smell resin at all. And in the room, you don't smell resin at all. This is super nice. <laughs> of course, I need to say a few words about the main equipment, <laughs> which is the 3D printer and the post-processing, which is very important in 3D printing. So, uh, I decided to go for the Anycubic uh, Photon Mono X because of one important value. Of course, it's kind of big uh, build plate, as you can see, but also it's very tall. This one is 20, almost 25 centimeters tall, so I can print tall objects, which is nice. And this one is the tallest in its class. It's very good. I use it every day for one and a half months. It's marvelous. This is a beautiful machine. If you don't plan to print big parts, don't get a big printer. It's important to get a high quality printer with a high quality LCD screen with a high resolution, but big 3D printer has a big vat, which is this pool of resin. And this big vat means that you need to pour a lot of resin inside so it will work. So you use a lot of resin. And if you print small parts, you don't need to use this big vat, but also in, in resin 3D printing, this build plate is upside down comparing to normal 3D printer and it's huge and it goes underneath resin and then goes up and in the first moment there is a huge suction force to peel off the print from the from the vat if you print only small uh, objects there is no need for you to use this huge build plate because it's always you know it's always creating a huge suction force so for small prints get a small printer for bigger prints get a bigger printer it's not like, I don't think it is universal that you will get the biggest printer on the market to print small uh, miniatures. Not like that. It doesn't work. Okay, then we're going further with post-processing. After you, you remove your, your print, you need to wash your stuff. And now it's very important. There are two types of alcohol on the market. One is this one that we drink. It's called ethanol. And uh, another one is isopropanol. And isopropanol is actually not alcohol, it's petrol. It's petroleum based, it's like benzene based. And I started because there is a lot of push in the internet to use this petroleum based isopropanol in washing 3D prints. But it's irritating. It's like smelling petrol almost. And it irritates your eyes, your, uh, your throat, and it also gives you a headache. So right away, forget about isopropanol. Just buy normal ethanol, which is made from plants and vegetables, and it's totally not irritating. You can breathe it in and you feel nice. You don't feel headache. Maybe sometimes you get lightheaded, but it's okay. So it's important. And after washing, this is Elegoo Wash and Cure 
station. This is actually only wash. And here is a cure station, which has a UV light. You set also your time, it's very nice. And this package is kind of inexpensive because it's less than 200 euro. So it's it's a very good price. And it's big, the volume is big. And here in the UV light, you harden your, post harden your, uh, your projects, your, your products. But what I think is quite reasonable is to buy two of those washing stations because very quickly the alcohol gets dirty and then you need another bucket of alcohol like I have here with a clear one. So you have two stages of washing, a dirty stage and then the clean stage. But it would be super nice to have two machines like this and then I set time in this one to wash like a pre-wash and then because then there is a, a little pro propeller that is mixing the, the, the alcohol. And then I would put my product into the second one like this to wash it properly in the clean alcohol. If you don't do it, then your product after, dry, after curing is sticky and it's not nice. So the stickiness becomes from, from in contaminated alcohol. So you need to have two stages of washing, otherwise you will be always sticky or you will need to change your alcohol every, every week, which is too often. Okay, now <laughs> is coming the very, very interesting part, because before I bought my 3D printer for, let's say, two weeks in the beginning of December, I was investigating in the internet, reading and uh, watching YouTube videos and trying to learn as much as I can before I invest money. And let's say my 3D printer costed around five or 500 uh, euro, something like that, maybe six, I don't remember. Then all mess around it, so it's probably like 1000 euro, or maybe a little bit more with few resins. So it's kind of an investment, but there is one very important information that nobody tells about, is that the slicers that we use for normal filament printer are way lighter for your computer hardware, comparing to the slicers that you use for resin 3D printer. And my computer is, was good enough to design 3D object, objects, was good enough to slice it for my Prusa filament printer, and I was happy with that, and everything seemed fine. But after I got my resin 3D printer, the slicers that are available on the market, they're actually free slicers for free, that are slicing uh, to prepare the, the file for the resin 3D printer are too heavy for, they were too heavy for my graphic card in my computer. So I ended up buying a new computer with the, it's actually a gaming computer that is able to process the data because the resolution of the resin printer is so high. I think this is the reason that, that you need a gaming computer. So it's kind of an investment. You have to get a new laptop or a new computer or if you have a good one, then it's okay. I also investigated the, the prices of resins, the, the prices of the process, and how much it will be comparing to the normal uh, filament printer. And on average, it is l around two times, two times more expensive to print a, a, an object, for example, like this. This, this is a bracket, this is a bracket for my uh, Leon batteries that I designed and I print, and this bracket is about two times more expensive on the resin 3D printer, but, which is super nice. I print the set of brackets for 8S battery on my Prusa filament printer in about four hours, and on my resin 3D printer, half an hour. This is the difference, and the quality difference is mind-blowing. So, it's worth it. Okay. So, I was investigating the resins, uh, trying to, because the, 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 like the prices of resins are so different. You can get a resin for 30 euro, you can, you can, I actually bought some resins for 25 euro, for 25 dollars for a liter, for kilo. And there are resins for three, 400 euro for a kilo, for a liter, it's similar. And it's kind of, giving me a headache which to choose and I had very, uh, after my initial prints with, uh, with some 
two, three resins that I bought, I realized one thing, that 3D printing resins are super brittle, super brittle. Even those ones that they write, they are not brittle, they are super brittle still, comparing to PLA or ASA or ABS. The, our standard 3D printing filament is way more resilient than the resins. So I quickly learned that the objects that I will print will be breaking too easily. But there is also one drawback. Resin, 3D printed, printing resin, it's not really resistance against high temperature. And this is for me something unacceptable because when I print a shroud for EDF like that, the motor is gonna be sitting here and the motor gets hot sometimes. <laughs> and if the motor is, the 50 centigrade Celsius is, is a standard operating temperature for the motor and the resins were already melting. So it was unacceptable. And I was really disappointed because I read on the internet that this resin holds up to 80 degrees. It didn't. And this started my adventure, which, which actually motivated me to record all the, the whole video. The adventure is, with choosing the right resin. And here is the array of resins here, plus back there, few of them in the trash <laughs> already that I tried. I investigated all those resins. Some of those resins are very expensive. Some of those resins are moderate and some of those resins are kind of cheap. And I printed of all of those resins a test bar that I designed. This test bar is two centimeters by one centimeter by 18 centimeters long. And this test bar then after printing, which was also a test how hard it is, is it to print, I washed and then I cured, solidly cured, to make sure that it's fully cured. And then I tested it for stiffness, for flex, for temperature resistance, and also for cracking. So I printed many of those and not only from uh, pure resins, but also from the mixes between the resins, which is super interesting. And I ended up with a big number of this, big number of these strips. And uh, actually I printed uh, maybe, I don't know, 50 or 100 of them with different configurations, maybe more than 100, with different, uh, uh, printing configuration, but also with mixtures. And I learned that the resin, it's very, I learned that it's very, very hard to find the resin that it's kind of stiff, resistant to temperature and not brittle. Trying to bite it, this one is not brittle, but it was, it, this is one of the last resins that I, that I tried, that I tested. And I want you to avoid this huge mess, this huge waste of money buying resins that you don't really need to buy because there is a lot of resins on the market that are a few years old. And this business, this resin 3D printing is developing, is advancing so much and so fast that resins from 2018 are outdated. They are already they're already obsolete because new resins are just much better. And what I also learned that sometimes the manufacturer says that this resin is holding up to 160 degrees, but they don't tell you that you need to post processes, post process this resin, meaning cure it in the chamber of 120 degrees Celsius. And there is only few companies on the market that actually admit you have to do it. So you buy a resin that is supposed to uh, hold up uh, up to 150, then you put it to boiling water and it's just flexible, it's, it's rubber. So you're disappointed. And probably some, uh, some resins maybe are, um, I don't know, maybe are too old or maybe, I don't know. I, I met, I did meet my expectations every time and a lot of resins were huge disappointment. I printed this, this bar, this strip, not straight on the build plate, but on supports, because after printing, I can check how hard is it to peel it off, which is kind of important information for curing times. But also I can check 
if the support legs are cracking or if they're flexible because I am looking for a blend or for a resin that is flexible but stiff, meaning that I can flex it but it will not crack, still giving me some resistance so it's not really loose. This one is very nice. So I came up with the finalists. This is maybe a 10 bars of my finalists. Uh, I will give you a description under the video. There will be a description in the in the under video. Uh, you know it will be written about all resins I tried, and in two three words I will explain what are the characteristics of these resins. If they're brittle, what is the real temperature resistance, and how hard is it to print? So you can choose and you can avoid buying those resins. Yeah. So. I don't want to bore you with the, with everything, with all the story. I just want to show you maybe three, four finalists. I will take them here. I got my four finalists here. The other ones, super expensive, super promising resins and super ecological resins because I went there too. It's not worth to talk about them. Uh, I'll just write about them. One more uh, thing I have to say. As you can see, resins have different colors. It's not without, it's not without the consequence, the color. Remember that the resin is uh, UV light cured, so it means that the, the UV light has to penetrate the resin to be cured. And as long as you print it in the printer, the layer of the, the one layer thickness is five microns, which is okay. So it cures. But if you produce a bigger object and you want to glue it together, forget about gluing with, with super glue because super glue glues it, but it's not holding. The same with epoxy resin or with epoxy glue. You have to glue it, you have to glue your product with resin that you printed it with and harden it with a UV light. But if you have a gray resin like this and you want to glue it with a, another piece like this and harden it with UV light, it will harden only on the outside and inside you will still, you will have forever liquid resin that didn't glue, didn't harden. So it will be very weak bond. So if you are thinking of getting a bigger objects that need to be glued, always go for the transparent or translucent resin which the light can penetrate. Then you can glue like this shroud is glued from two halves because my printer is too small and after gluing you don't and sanding you don't see where it was glued and it's hard like original 3D print. It's very nice and also uh, also like they call it smoky black it's translucent color. This is very good for UV light penetration, but remember that if you have a yellow, uh, kind of yellowish tra translucent resin, the yellow color, it's cutting off the UV light, it's changing, it's like a filter for the UV light, or, or even the red color is kind of filter for the UV light, and also the UV light is, is not likely to penetrate inside, so always go for the transparent resin. It's always the best because then it will cure them the, the best inside. And also when are you gluing a translucent or transparent object and you have a bigger gap, don't worry about that because this resin that you will use for gluing, it's kind of thick. When it's not really warm, it's kind of thick. So it works perfectly as a filler. So you can fill all your, your gaps and then afterwards it sands beautifully with the sandpaper and you can smooth it out and it's really nice to work with cured uh, 3D printing resin. So it's important. Yeah. The nicest and the most important part of the video are the selection of the resins that I chose as the best quality resins, the easiest to print and the, the best for resistance for cracking a high and high temperature. So absolutely no not absolutely if you go for super easy super fast prints and you don't worry about cracking so much this resin is not cracking really that much but it, but it cracks a little bit but you go for a resin that it's 
inexpensive. That it's, uh, this is actually my markings, I wrote it. <laughs> inexpensive, very easy to print, very reliable. It, great, it gives great results. Really, I tested a lot of resins, I spent a lot of money on it. <clears throat> this is the Siraya Tech Simple. Actually, this one is simple clear, so it's transparent. It prints wonderful. It washes in only 15% alcohol. I washed it in normal alcohol and it was very good also. It's very hard, very stable, uh, like keeps geometry because some resins when you print, the geometry goes into space. You cannot hold it together, it's so strange. And this one, it really resembles your project on your, on your computer. And uh, what is nice about this resin is that it's very stiff up to 70 degrees Celsius, which is a lot. So this resin is nice. I can easily recommend this resin to you. I also tried it in minus 5 degrees Celsius to crack it. It's not cracking. It's a good resin and it's inexpensive, so you can go for it. Siraya Tech, simple. But this is resin for you to start with. You will have a lot of successful prints with this resin. Go for it, don't buy anything else. It's very nice. I bought every cheap, like beginner's resin on the market and a lot of them make me a lot of trouble or they were pure, poor quality or they were cracking in my hands. They were not satisfying. This one is a solid resin, it's very good. Okay, and now the winner of all resins. I, it's just my favorite by far. This is again Sirayatech, so this company is really doing well. Sirayatech Build. This one, the color is smoky black. It's nice because the, the, the light is, is going through it very nicely. Build. And this resin is stiff. It's stiff up to 100 degrees Celsius after good curing, so it's nice, very nice, very strong, very fast. It's very fast and easy to print. Uh, and it's not cracking so much, but I decided that for my applications, right, like for EDF rotors, like the prototype rotors or something like this, I need something that will be less prone to cracking, especially when, uh, for example, a little stone hits the blade of the rotor. I didn't want it to crack, I wanted to flex. So I decided that I will mix it with uh, some super, super flexible resins on the market. And I tried differ different ones. And I have only two finalists. One, again, Siraya Tech Tenacious. This one is uh, kind of super soft and it melts in 40 degrees. So <laughs> you can, you know, a cold tea making it uh, soft. And another one is Frozen Nylon Green Tough. There are different resins, because nobody compares them in the internet. Frozen Nylon Green Tough, it's more like, more like a rubber, it's springy, so it springs back, and it melts in 55 degrees. Uh, and Cyriatic Tenacious is more like, uh, like a paste, like uh, it's more, it's kind of slow, it doesn't it's not really good for making tires or, or rubbery things because it's, it's gl like gluey. But this resin costs me 140 euro and this resin costs me 45 euro. It's a huge difference. And after mixing those two resins in proportion 50-50, 50% to 50% with Ceratic Build, so I made the test strip Soriatic Build Tenacious and Soriatic Build Frozen Nylon Green Tough. This mixture, Soriatic Soriatic became better because it was cracking less. The temperature difference was only a few degrees. Uh, so Build Tenacious was getting soft in 73 degrees and Build Nylon in 75 degrees, which is almost no difference. And build nylon was prone to cracking more than build tenacious. So the best mixture of this huge test <laughs> that took me one and a half months is Soraya Tech Build, Soraya Tech Tenacious, 
mixed 50-50, but important thing, mix it well and warm it and mix it for good five minutes in your hands, then you will have really good results. I made a special bottle. I made a special bottle that I used because I, of course, used many of those resins and I didn't buy only one bottle because when you make tests, you run through resins. So this bottle is uh, with a sticker Build Tenacious, already mixed 50-50 and I use it for printing and it's super, super nice. The only thing it doesn't do, it doesn't cover anything because it's transparent. So if I print brackets, I print brackets from another blend mixture of another uh, resins to be gray so you don't see what's underneath. I think uh, it's really worth it. Get your resin 3D printer, especially now that it's not possible to fly because it's or wet or it's snowing, uh, especially in Poland, it's, it's un unflyable. But you can design something and you can print something and this is a lot of fun. You can create something new, which is great. I have here uh, the array of the uh, the array of the jet fan drives, which are my favorites from uh, some time now. And this is a 130, which is a monster drive. And I think this is this drive, 130 millimeters jet fan. Uh, it's good for even three meter jet, even uh, 20 kilogram jet because it's so powerful. Uh, then here is the 120, which is which is much lighter. It's actually uh, almost 800 grams and this is one and a half kilo, so you save almost half. And this is the drive that will sit uh, in the Odyssey for some... It will sit in the Odyssey for, for this uh, lightweight flying. And I printed, designed and printed a lip for this, for this uh, EDF on my resin 3D printer. It fits super nice because the quality is superb. This is the 110 with the biggest motor. And this is gonna uh, be around 8 kilowatts and uh, I have a jet already for it. This is 1.6 meter jet, fiberglass jet, and I'm expecting speeds of around 400 kilometers per hour on this little baby. So it's nice, but uh, I used to design and I used to work on new designs and, and new prototypes of shrouds and, and rotors for EDFs on my old 3D printer and it was all nice, it was all good, but after every print I have to post-process it with my hands, meaning that I had to sand these stator blades with the sandpaper <laughs> with my hands. It took me a few hours, and then I had to sand it inside, then I had to dip it in acetone so it's smooth, because acetone is smoothing out the, the ASA or ABS. I actually used ABS with carbon fiber for these shrouds. And this is all very nice. This is a very interesting shroud that I made for a drive 150 millimeters, which I want to test in uh, Odyssey also. Interesting project. Uh, but when I got myself a resin 3D printer, all this post-processing work is not required because the, the surface of the, the print is so smooth, it's so nice. It's really smooth, it's super nice. So the only thing you need to do is to print it and then to test it. And one thing I, I realized that you can use, and actually for this you can use a isopropanol alcohol, the benzene one, mix it with let's say 30 or 40% of resin, transparent resin, and after printing and hardening a project, you can dip it in this mixture, take it out and it will drip off. And after it dries on the, uh, I don't know, in the warm room or, or so, dries completely, you can harden it again and then your product is shiny smooth. This is very good. I, I tried it a few times, it works. Okay, so it was the longest, I think the longest video <laughs> of my, uh, you know, from the workshop for sure and from flying for sure, but it was very important and I strongly encourage you to follow your excitement for your follow your dream uh, don't give up if you if you feel motivated and you feel like you need to buy a 3d printer go for it it's a lot of study a lot of work the system is completely different like the the classical 3d printer but it's worth it uh, 
eventually will, will cut your production time in uh, <laughs> unbelievably and you will get a lot of satisfaction from your new, uh, new hobby. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed it for sure. <laughs> and I hope to see you next time. And this time, fingers crossed, already flying the Odyssey, which is weighing now uh, 11 kilos instead of, instead of uh, 14 and a half. 11 kilograms takeoff weight already with batteries. So it's gonna be interesting to see. Thank you again, and I hope to see you next time.